He was considered a god among men in the fashion world. Tributes are flooding in for Karl Lagerfeld, who's died in Paris. He was the creative director of the giant French fashion brand Chanel for more than three decades. Regarded as one of the most important fashion visionaries of the 20th and 21st centuries, he was known for his dark sunglasses and black suit and his hair pulled back in a ponytail. Rudaba Abbas Kamani reports. The signature dark glasses, collared white shirts, grey-haired ponytail and fingerless leather gloves. A look that defined Karl Lagerfeld. Fashion for him was more than a passion. It was a reason to exist. It was his meticulous attention to detail and precision that earned him the status of the Kaiser of fashion. He was born in Hamburg in the 1930s, but the exact date of his birth remains a mystery. In 1952, Karl Lagerfeld moved to Paris. He proved himself in the fashion houses of Balmain, Jean Patou and Chloe, before joining Fendi in 1965, where he remained artistic director. But it was at Chanel that Karl Lagerfeld truly came into his own. In 1983, he took over as the head of the fashion house and revived the brand. Soon enough, the two intertwined seas became affiliated with luxury. He designed the perfect cut for his tweed jackets and the classic little black dress, combining the masculine with the feminine with his monochrome palette. And with that, Chanel was reborn. But that didn't leave Karl Lagerfeld resting on his laurels. In 2004, he became the first high-profile fashion designer to collaborate on a collection with H&M. He put his photographic skills to use and exhibited his work in 2011. If I were only in fashion, I would risk isolating myself, which is the worst thing for creativity. By doing photography, even fashion photography and advertising, which I love, I stay within the movement of fashion, people of fashion, and my bubble is not the only thing that I see. Karl Lagerfeld launched his own brand, created perfumes, stood out as an interior designer and even opened his own bookstore in Paris. I wear dark glasses to see better. Observation is more precise and you can't tell if I'm looking left or right. I want to know everything. If I wasn't like this, I wouldn't own 300,000 books and I wouldn't be obsessed with the desire to know everything. I'm completely obsessed with this. And it was an obsession that stayed with him till the end. Loved or loathed, Karl Lagerfeld has left an indelible mark on the history of fashion. We're joined in the studio by fashion journalist Lisa Foreman. Lisa, at Chanel, um, Karl Lagerfeld came into his own. He revived the brand. What did he do there that propelled him to rock star status? I mean, basically, the brand could have been dead on its feet had it not been for Lagerfeld, who came in about 10 years after Coco Chanel um, died, and he relaunched it with a ready-to-wear collection. But I think the reason why he's continued to propel Chanel into the future is because, you know, he's a designer that's will go down in history as somebody who's managed to successfully um, embrace the heritage of a brand, yet bring it into the future. And he's done that by combining, you know, um, house uh, designs and looks and materials like tweed, the 1920s sporty aesthetics, little girly suits, black dresses, um, with more modern and even futuristic looks and elements. There are sneakers in his shows. Sometimes he uses plastic layers over tweed, futuristic, silvery, metallic looks, and, and he makes that look beautiful still. So I think that's how he's managed to bring Chanel into the future. Reaction to his death is flooding in on social media. The German actress and model Diane Kruger said on Instagram, I cannot tell you how much you meant to me and how much we will miss you. I'll never forget your kindness to me, your laughs, your imagination. I came to Paris to see you this week to introduce you to my daughter. I'm heartbroken I was too late. And the former French first lady and model Carla Bruni said, thank you for all the sparkles. The whole world and I will miss you. Victoria Beckham said, Carl was a genius and always so kind and generous. Lisa, we, we, you and I have seen him around Paris. He was a carefully crafted persona. He famously said, I'm like a caricature of myself. And, and I like that. He liked being like that. He was so mysterious. He was a brand in his own right. He was a brand in his own right. And I mean, you know, who else can you more readily identify in fashion or which fashion designer could anyone more readily identify than Karl Lagerfeld? Because he did have his very distinctive visual uh, look and persona. He's always hidden behind his glasses. He said controversial things. He's 
could be considered controversial as a designer in that he, um, as I've said earlier, brought in some very sort of futuristic elements that, God forbid, Coco Chanel would have thought of, you know, uh, bringing silvery, crazy materials into her shows. But, yeah, he was a character that distinctly stood out, beginning with how he looked. And, of course, we all are talking about the fashion industry and uh, how people dress and how people present themselves in public and how that comes across. And just that one look, sticking to that look, just carried so much weight and then beyond that obviously he was so multifaceted working as a photographer as a designer you know designing for multiple brands being the age he was we think 85 yet being so modern um a brilliant guy and he absolutely defined french fashion and probably the fashion industry today because he did at his age still manage to be at the absolute cutting edge and even his cat his pet was fa- was famous she's got 100,000 followers on on Instagram, I think, which is incredible. He he was a commentator, though, on the world around us. Just before his death, our reporter, Haxi Mayers belkin made this report about some of his collections over the years. Karl Lagerfeld is nothing short of an institution. The way he is with people, his team, he's admirable. To see Karl Lagerfeld after all these years, well, he still surprises us. It's about daily life. What's great is to be dressed well all the time. It's not about being chic on a night out and being lazy the rest of the time. That, for me, is not OK. Since his arrival at Chanel in 1983, Lagerfeld has been an integral part of the brand. In fact, he hasn't missed a single show. That is, until January, when the summer 2019 couture finale consisted of the traditional Chanel bride alongside studio director Virginie Viard. Lagerfeld's father made his fortune in business. His mother raised him almost single-handedly, and she later became his muse. In 2014, under the great dome of Paris's Grand Palais, Lagerfeld recreated a typical Parisian street, overrun by exceptionally chic protesters. My mother was a feminist. When I was seven or eight, she told me that men weren't so important. She told me if you're not too ugly, you can have a child with pretty much any man. It's a pragmatism her son inherited. Lagerfeld understood from a young age that in order to sell collections, you need to also sell the stories that underpin them. That's the spirit of the collection, which for me is more important than any one particular piece. It comes as a whole, the demonstration, the street, the clothes, the girls, everything comes as one. It's a melting pot of propositions and ideas. Back in 2008, Lagerfeld donned a high-vis yellow vest as part of a road safety campaign. These days, yellow vests are everywhere in France, but Lagerfeld was ahead of the trend. Similarly, back in 2004, Lagerfeld was the first luxury designer to come up with a capsule collection with the masters of fast fashion, H&M. Lagerfeld knows how to provoke desire, and that's just as important in the world of cosmetics and leatherwear as it is in the world of haute couture. Chanel sells lipstick, perfumes. It's more affordable than the ready-to-wear collections. But to get the message out, for people to see what we're doing, you need an impressive decor, an atmosphere. This will be seen all over the world. The idea is very simple. Luxury needs to be normalised. And as far as if you have the opportunity to buy these things, you need to wear them in a cool and relaxed way, just like you do when you go to the supermarket. It's vulgar when you start treating it like Sunday best. His pronouncements may often seem flamboyant, to say the least, but he can also be an astute commentator on the world he lives in. In 2013, at the peak of the debate on gay marriage, Lagerfeld let his stance be known. Most haute couture shows end with a wedding dress. That year, it was two brides strutting down the catwalk. The year before, another overt reference to a major question of the day, the transition from fossil fuels to renewables. The catwalk was adorned with dozens of solar panels and a replica wind farm. Everything I do comes to me spontaneously. I don't do market research, I don't think about it. I listen to an internal voice. I'm like the Joan of Arc of Chiffon, that's all. Theatrical gestures have always been important for Lagerfeld. In 2017, still at the Grand Palais, models walked in the shadow of a vast silver rocket. Lagerfeld's extraordinary eye for detail, coupled with his ability to tap into the zeitgeist of the day, have made him one of the most recognised and admired designers in the world. So, Lisa, what, 
What happened now for Chanel? Well, Chanel has announced that an in-house designer, Virginie Villar, who's been with the house pretty much as long as um, Lagerfeld, will be taking over. Um, she started as an intern a few years after Lagerfeld took the reins 36 years ago. I imagine that for an old school brand like Chanel that's had a designer in place for so long, 36 years, that not going with somebody in-house might be a bit of a risk. Although you do see other uh, French heritage houses like Balenciaga, which uh, took a designer, an edgy designer called Demnica Vesalia, or Louis Vuitton, which has hired a DJ, an edgy designer, um, Virgil Abloh, with his own brand Off-White, take the reins. But I think that's totally different. They, those are houses that haven't had one designer as legendary as Karl Lagerfeld in place for so long. So let's see what she does with Chanel now. Okay. Lisa Foreman, thank you so much for joining us and thank you for joining us for this special show about the fashion icon Karl Lagerfeld, who's died in Paris. He'll be remembered for his starring role at one of the most prolific houses in fashion history. He was known for always looking to the future. For fashion, though, it looks a lot less wondrous without him. Remember our website, we're also on Twitter, Facebook and Instagram. There's more news coming up on France 24 after this. <laughs>